four CCs done right. Now, first question is, what is a four CC? If you haven't heard of it, it's kind of this archaic thing. It's a four character code. Um, they're commonly used in AV codecs and pixel formats and things like that. And it's basically four characters, which is quasi-human readable. Uh, the serves as a magic number and people shove it into a UN32, right? Um, they're also useful if you have a small set of things, not just an AV codex, but uh, a small set of things like your, uh, your product portfolio for your company to identify. I have four of my own. I call them Jemmy, Iota, Minalulu. This is Iota. Guess which ones I named. Um, now, in the old days, and indeed today, we actually have multi-character literals in C++. We have them in C. And so you can write this. And given the right flags, it will compile. But the disadvantage I, disadvantages are fairly obvious. Uh, it's not portable. In fact, the C standard says that it's implementation defined. There are some obvious endianness issues, because um, usually you want to write these things in, or read them from a, a file. Um, and it just, as you can imagine, invites questionable practices like casting string data to ints and stuff like that. Stuff that's fine in C, but not in C++. And, you know, endianness is an issue because IOTA is not equal to A2I. Now in C++ 98, the way we did this, of course, the way we got around this, of course, was by making a class. And uh, here's a sketch of a class that, uh, you know, I've seen a couple of code bases. And we do this because we want strong typing, right? We're not, we're not C anymore. We want strong typing. We want conversions that we control from UN32 or a string back and forth. And so we make a class uh, and we get strong typing. We, can, we now cannot confuse a 4CC with arbitrary integral types, um, but at quite a high cost here because there's a lot of verbosity that goes on in C++ 98 classes. Um, now we want to control where to convert, but also we have to tell the compiler like how to, now we as a class, we have to tell the compiler how to compare these things for equality, how to order them maybe, we have to specialize std hash. We have to tell it how to output, et cetera, et cetera. There's probably more that I forgot here. Uh, so that was C++ 98. Now, in roles C++ 11 and C++ today, and here's a much better way of doing it. So we're going to use a strong integral type in the form of an enum struct, right? And it just, its underlying type is UN32. Uh, it doesn't have any values. Uh, but we're just going to provide free functions as the effective constructors to create one uh, and to, I'm not, I didn't show it on this slide, but to, but to uh, output them and convert them to other things. So you get, uh, and we can also do a user-defined literal, uh, which is const eval. Um, I used to write these const expra, but I don't know a reason why they wouldn't be available at compile time. So I've switched to use, using const eval. It is, after all, a literal in code. And you can imagine how these things work. You can write them in C++ 11 minus the const eval part, but um, since you only have ever have four characters, the recursive easy uh, method for converting the string is fine. And then you can do things like this, which is great because you can have these literals in your code and they're at compile time known. So you can switch over them and you've got nice readable code. Great. <clears throat> so with this approach, we don't have to write any comparison operators or a std hash specialization, because this thing's just an integer under the hood. The compiler knows how to do that stuff without us telling it. Um, and we get switch statements. Because we get control over the UDL and the conversion, we can easily handle endianness. And we still provide operator, uh, shift output operator for now, <laughs> uh, but we don't get any automatic conversions. We get to control all of that. Well, hold on a minute. We don't get any automatic conversions. Uh, but we still need to work with legacy functions sometimes, and we need those conversions. So we'd like to make them as easy as possible. Sometimes we need to work with third party libraries. Sometimes we need to just jam our type in somewhere, right? So we need these conversions. Um, so I think I, I've grown to like unary plus for this, for this, for conversion, meaning convert to underlying type, but don't change the value, right? And there's some prov provenance here because um, we use it for converting a lambda to a function pointer. 
We use it occasionally for converting a char to an int. So I've taken to using it for converting an enum struct into its underlying type as well, where I want that functionality. In 23, we get std to underlying. That's still quite verbose. Um, so I quite like unary plus here. I think this, uh, I, I put it to you that this might become conventional. <clears throat> so caring for your four CCs involves using an enum struct, using a constant value DL, using explicit conversion to get all that nice stuff. And I like unary plus for conversion to underlying. Now, caring for your KVs, on the other hand, involves this. They like unlimited hay, Timothy hay for preference, although I have allergies, so a different kind of hay is fine. They have to have fresh greens every day. They can't make their own vitamin C, so it's very important to provide them with vitamin C in their diet. Um, the other thing to know about them is that they really don't like living alone. They are herd animals. Uh, they need at least a buddy. In fact, in Switzerland, I don't think it's legal to have a single guinea pig. Thank you very much.